once again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, kind of in my more relaxed couch room, uh, mainly because I um, eh, just wanted to mix it up a little bit, uh, doing things a little bit differently, trying different areas of the collection. Uh, I'd love to do a little more filming in the, in the uh, original room, which is my boiler room, but there just isn't a lot of places for me to sit and uh, set up a studio. So uh, that's why I've kind of reserved that room for more shelf talk. But as you can see, I'm in a nice space here. You can see uh, behind me, we got a lot of shelf space. <laughs> Ironically, my unboxing channel right now, I'm utilizing this backdrop, which is basically the, the remainder of most of my boxed toys. Uh, there's more around, but that's that's where a bulk of it and gets a, ends up getting put on display. A lot of my individual figures over here for both um, six inch and, or sorry, 12 inch like hot toys and sideshow and of course this is where i end up placing a lot of the individual figures and there's spots all around you so but i thought i would just kind of mix it up i've done some i've done a few episodes in here and today we have um some two two different types of things to unbox uh the first one is from a, another gamestop item so i wanted to uh get that going right away i'm pretty sure it's going to be a black series item um but i can't remember which one exactly they're gonna be ooh, no, ooh, oh yeah oh yeah just make sure it's only one right okay we've got the ig11 credits collection i think it's what it's called uh it comes with a little credit and it comes with this really cool paint scheme now i'm gonna be honest with you you know it's so hard for me to to unbox these i mean i've got more here i've got the empire strikes back ones that i've that i've unboxed in earlier episodes I just don't have the heart just yet. Now, the other thing is, I've already unboxed an IG-11, and I don't really feel the need to unbox another one, even though this one, the paint scheme is different. However, maybe someday I will take all of them once I've acquired them all and, um, and do that. Uh, now, for those who don't know, this is essentially, they call it the credits collection because, um, well, it includes a credit. You can see up there at the top, they have a, a credit that's kind of uh, included with it. And it, it is based on a lot of the paint art. If you've watched The Mandalorian, and if you haven't done this, make sure you watch the credits to The Mandalorian because they always include uh, concept art for the episode. Not just like the show in general, but the episode you just watched. So here's an example of some of that concept art. And they took this uh, idea and they made it a really cool paint scheme. Now, I'm not one to normally buy the same figure over and over and over again. I used to, and then when I realized that they weren't going to stop making figures, I realized that eventually they're going to take over my house. So I had to make a make a, a you know decision to stop doing that. But then they did this kind of thing, which was just such a cool paint scheme, uh, you know, related to the artwork itself. Well played, Hasbro. Well played. Now, they've made these exclusives in different stores. Hasbro, um, Hasbro Pulse made them available, GameStop, um, Target, Walmart. I was able to snag a few of them on their pre-order pages. Unfortunately, not all of them. So some of them I probably will be um, purchasing on the secondary market, although I'm going to wait a little bit for the popularity to die down before I do that. So that is one of the first... This is the first uh, credit collection item to... Um, to come in. I do want to read what it says in the back. It's kind of cool. This distinctive collection features premium deco applications inspired by the end credit images from the Mandalorian, plus a collectible Imperial credit accessory. Um, after the fall of the Galactic Empire, usage of their form of money, Imperial credits, became less common, and with many planets refusing payments in the currency on principle. So I thought that was pretty interesting because, you know, you think about it, like an empire would have their own, you know, imperial credits, right? That's their form of money. And when the imperial empire, when it fell, then what happens to that money? Does it still have any value? It's really, what, what, what is, a, you know, it's like when, um, you know, during the Civil War, the Confederacy had their own money printed, Confederate money. Well, when, the, when, the, when they lost the war and, you know, became one with the Union again, um, imperial I'm sorry, girl. Uh, Confederate uh, credits became, or Confederate money became paper that you could, you know, start campfires with. It was worthless. Um, so I guess credits kind of fall in the same thing. I love the scene in the first episode where uh, I guess he gets paid. He, he accepts a calamari and flan or something like that, which does these little squishy, when he picks up the little squishy disc, he makes a little <laughs> kind of sound because they're all 
kind of <coughs> underwater. So that's a pretty um, cool little tidbit. So awesome. Um, I will show uh, the, ep the, the, the future ones. I think I got three of them. I hope to get the rest of them eventually. But um, IG-11 was the first to arrive. I'm sorry the lighting on, uh, overhead is a little weird. And I don't, I don't have lighting behind you, behind the camera as well. But there you go. There he is. Really cool. All right. Second one. Okay, now this is my controversial one. I've, I've done a few. I've done something like this before. And um, I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I've been waiting for this um, to, uh, to, I was going to do it all in one shot. But I've decided I want to, um, you know, kind of start with this one and then go through it. Um, I will, let me just open this up first and you will see what it is. In fact, some people might see the box and may even know what this is. Um, I hope I don't lose subscribers because of this. Okay, we have... Yeah. Okay, what is this? People probably, some people are probably looking at it right now and going, oh no, you didn't just do that. But I'm here to say that yes, I did. This is a um, custom, uh, not even a reproduction really. It's just a custom figure um, in the style, this is that Grand Admiral Thrawn, of course, in the style of Kenner action figures from the 19, late 70s and early 80s, okay? Not like the new ones, or I say new ones. To be honest with you, it's getting kind of weird because the vintage vintage, that's what I'm calling it, 1978 to 1986, if you include the droid, the droid figures and the Ewok figures, 1978, really, to 1986. So what's that? 79, 81, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 years. 8 years we've had this kind of figure. Okay, very basic five points of articulation, kind of a basic sculpt, that type of thing. Then in 1995, so about 10 years later, um, Kenner slash Hasbro started releasing new figures. And they haven't stopped since. So that's, that's 25 years, right? 95, 2005, 15, yeah. 25 years of figure versus eight years of vintage. So... You know, now the early stuff from there is considered vintage. So this, I call it vintage vintage. Anyway, so it says Expanded Universe. It's on a card. It's Grand Admiral Thrawn. And it is put together by a gentleman or a company called Smith Lord Creations. And you can look them up. Um, you can type them in on Google. You can type them in on Facebook. And you'll notice that there are a series of other figures underneath on the card. Okay? Those are all custom figures that were never made originally but fit fully into the original look of the um you know of the figures and this person this creative person came up with the idea to do a whole run of these figures now they weren't the price of the original figures nor are they the price of current figures by any means but you can see it comes in a really beautiful punched or unpunched card okay and, you know, it does say at the bottom, uh, you know, all of the, uh, it gives all of the correct, um, you know, it says, you know, Smith Lord creations. It, it does have something on the, on the figure itself kind of indicating that this is not an original. Okay. But there are many people out there, especially vintage collectors that, uh, frown upon this. This isn't the first one I've made. I've actually got purchased, um, uh, Oh my God, I can't remember which one I did. Um, there was, oh, I think it was Han in uh, Stormtrooper gear. Or no, or no, this one's coming. Um, there was a few other ones that they made and I purchased a few of them. And I actually pre-ordered all of these and they're making them. But it's not a company that has, you know, massive, massive production facilities. They are kind of making them, if not by hand, they're making them in a very slow mechanical process. And therefore, it's going to take time. So... It is hopeful, I'm hopeful to have the remainder of the, the 12 additional figures by the end of the year, calendar year, and I hope to be able to share them with you very soon. I was really hoping to share them um, where I'm very close to, actually, by the, time I, by the time this episode airs, it'll probably be past my 400th episode. I wanted to do something special for that, um, and I was hoping it would be these, these like all of them, but it, 
just wasn't in the cards. So I'm um, not sure what the 400th episode was. I hope we liked it. But um, anyway, uh, this was, um, you know, like the bonus figure. You bought the 12, and this was like the 13th that was like your baker's dozen type of thing. So uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Uh, I won't talk about the other ones really just yet because they are coming. They're not here yet, but I'm really excited about them. And I have to say I've kind of gotten on board the, you know, the vintage um, customization, uh, reproduction, um, everything of that nature. I, I, t I see it as, in an arti as an artistic and creative way to explore your fandom. I support it, and I support these artisans, and I see them as artisans. Um, I believe I'm getting something worth my money that, that I feel. And, and, you know, there is a kind of a, a snarky attitude about it that they, they say, like, you know, the fans strike back, where in, it's like they're saying to Kenner or Rella to Hasbro, like, you know, we don't like the way you're doing this, so we're going to do it ourselves because we can do it better. And uh, I appreciate that. And I appreciate that aspect of fandom. I appreciate that. I don't necessarily agree with that wholeheartedly. I don't have really anything against Hasbro or the designers or anybody there. Um, they're doing what they need to do to keep their business afloat, and I understand that. So um, that's fine. But I do feel like this kind of thing is a great kind of supplement to collecting Star Wars. I think some people think that uh, down the road, I you know, what's to stop me or anybody else from putting this out on sale and saying, you know, oh look, a vintage figure that was rarely seen. I'm going to sell it for $7,000. First of all, no one in their right mind would pay $7,000 for this. But second of all, um, you know, there, there has to be a, you know, a, a seller and a buyer responsibility. It's both ways. That's kind of how I feel about it. If you disagree or you agree, I'd love you to leave a comment. But what I mean by a buyer seller disagree, you know, or responsibility is that a buyer needs to be able to understand what they're getting. Okay, they need to look at something and, you know, follow the, the, one of the main rules of buying anything is that if it sounds too good to be true, if, you're getting, if it sounds like you're getting too good of a deal to, to be true, it's probably true. Okay, or, is it, you know, it's, it's probably not true. It's probably, you know, a fake, a scam or something of that nature, okay? But we're in the, we're in the age right now with 3D printing and all the stuff that people can do in their own homes. I, I'm really excited to see how Hasbro takes that. What is ever going to happen when there's color... 3D printing. Does anybody think that's even going to happen? Is it possible? I don't know. I'm not that much of an engineer or a scientist to be able to tell you if that's possible. But all I can tell you is that the stuff that they're doing now with 3D printers, I'm seeing people print actual copies of figures, hand painting them after the fact. But wow, that's amazing to think you, in your house with a small little box, you can make your own action figures. How long is it going to be before they you know, come with their own paint gaps and things of that nature? And pretty soon, instead of Hasbro selling figures... They're going to sell you files that you can open up on your computer and print. It's a cool concept. And it allows you, you know, you know, a, a, essentially an unending, infinite a number of possibilities for what you can do with your Star Wars collecting. Okay? It might cause a lot of what I have around me to become obsolete in terms of, you know, why do people collect? But I collect because I just enjoy it. It's a nostalgic trip to me. Um... Grand Ammo Thrawn, even though Grand Ammo Thrawn was not featured, by the way, if anybody doesn't know who this is, he's made an expanded universe appearance in the Timothy Zahn novels, Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command. I think it was The Last Command. And then uh, he's also made an in-universe, a canon appearance in Star Wars Rebels. And uh, although slightly different modeled up character, but, you know, based on the same thing. So he has a very prominent place in Star Wars lore. So for them to create this figure with a really cool art in the box, you know, the, and a really cool card, I think is fan-freaking-tastic. And I totally support them and anybody else who wants to do that. I've also made some episodes where some people have started releasing, uh, I should say, unreleased, you know, they've started sending out and, and selling unreleased, you know, reproductions of unreleased droids and Ewok figures, which I think is fantastic. And I think I might try to finish my collection that way because it's just too expensive to try to get an original. I don't care if it's an original. If, if Hasbro produced them, I would purchase them. Look at what's going on with the retro collection. You can't get them. They're, they're figures. They're the six. They're the figures that we've had for decades. And now they, they put them out again on retro cards and everybody's buying them. So obviously there's a desire for it. I do wish Hasbro would get, on it, get in on it. But I applaud... 
uh, young entrepreneurial artisans for doing it themselves. I think it's fantastic. I'm even encouraged. That's why if you look at my T Public store, there's there's a lot of um, you know art based on old carded action figures that my daughter did. And not only did she do that, but she's doing some original art based on holiday special characters and based on the Rise of Skywalker, which never got their own dedicated line and, and figures that were not released in The Last Jedi. There's a lot of great, you know, opportunities for artists to, you know, interpret their own thing. And I think it's it's important to um, support that, okay, along with supporting your your main retailers and, and, and supporting the you know, Hasbro and Sideshow and things of that nature if you want this product to be continued okay so that's going to do it for this week's episode of darth tuba star wars unboxing show i enjoy being in this space for once in a while it just kind of mixes it up a little bit uh and uh you know i'm kind of tighten that little tabled set area um i know the lighting isn't the best here maybe i'll try to get some lighting set up next time to that'll do a little better but um i also don't have a lot of outlets around here to set up lighting that's kind of the reason why i didn't do it but I hope you enjoy it. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the Smith Lord creation. Let me know what you think about the Mandalorian and the, um, you know, the uh, credit collection with the different paint scheme. Let me know your thoughts on that. I'd be very interested to hear what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Check me out on, on Instagram and Twitter at Darth Tuba. Darth Tuba Star Wars unboxing page on Facebook. And uh, again, if you want to support the show, check out all my T Public art. Uh, you can get it on shirts and and sticker everything from something as as little inexpensive as uh, stickers and masks and buttons to shirts and hoodies. And uh, I'd love to see uh, you guys uh, check it out. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, may the force and the toys be with you.